Hi, I'm Mike Shea, author of Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master and the website SlyFlourish.com. Today, we're going to look at using some of the principles from Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master while running the adventure Lost Mine of Fandelver. Lost Mine of Fandelver is the first officially published 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons adventure. It's also likely the most popular adventure for, for the 5th edition of Dungeons & Dragons. And it's a really fantastic adventure. I really, I've run it many, many times, and I like it a whole lot. In this video, we're going to look specifically at chapter one called Goblin Arrows. This is the first chapter. It's the, it's the beginning of many uh, adventurers' careers. And it's for some many, for many dungeon masters, it's their first foray into running a D&D game. So we're going to look specifically at, at chapter one. Uh, when you're running chapter one, expect it to take about four hours. It can, it can go up or down depending on how things go. But generally speaking, each chapter of this book can take roughly four hours. Sometimes it can go definitely longer than that. So you'll want to be prepared for some of the chapters to go longer than that. My first tip is to read the adventure. Now, when you're running chapter one, you might think, oh, I'll just read chapter one and I'm, and I'm good. And you, you're probably okay. And actually for chapter one, that, that, isn't, too, that isn't too bad. For chapters two, three, and four, you likely want to read all of them before you really get into it. Chapter two has a tendency of going very wide with many NPCs and many story elements, and it has a lot of opportunity for you to drop in hints that occur later in the game, earlier in the adventure in, in chapter two. Uh, but we're not going to worry about that right now. We're going to worry about, about chapter one. The trickiest bit of running chapter one, of running Goblin Arrows, is that your characters are only level one, and level one characters are really, really squishy. They die easily. They have very few hit points. They have many, many fewer hit points than you have at even level two and three. And one or two good hits, two or certainly two or three good hits, can take a character out. And sometimes even one. And with a really bad critical hit, they can just die outright. So we have a few, a few tricks to deal with this. One of them is a, one that I, that I personally like is to have a benevolent uh, cleric, a benevolent priest that the characters have run into on their journey who, who blesses them by casting aid upon them. The spell aid, which is a second level cleric spell, gives every character that it is cast upon, it increases their hit point maximum by five and also their current hit points by five to, to, to compensate for that. And two castings of aid can hit six people. So if there are six party members, a wandering cleric can cast aid upon the whole party and give everybody plus five hit points. If you don't want to bring in a benevolent cleric somewhere in the middle of the beginning of the adventure just to just to cast aid on them, another trick is to have give one of the characters an heirloom item. And as the group gets together for the first time, the heirloom item sort of glows with magical light and it casts the, the item casts aid on everybody once. And then the item loses that power. So it's a, it's a single use relic that casts aid on them at level one. With these extra five hit points, they're a lot less likely to get killed in a single hit. They can probably take two, even three hits before they drop. A critical hit won't kill them outright. They'll still have to heal, and that after an eight hour, after eight hours, that aid will disappear, so they don't get to keep those extra hit points. But it will probably help them get through the whole rest of the Goblin Arrows adventure. Otherwise, it can be a really hard adventure, and a couple of good hits can really just knock them right out. Another trick I have is I really like using Milestone Experience. Uh, this is a debatable, debatable topic among DMs, but I, as a lazy DM, I find it much easier to simply level the characters when they hit certain points in the story. In this case, rather than calculating out experience points throughout each of the four chapters of Lost Mine of Fandelver, you can instead level them right at the end of every chapter. They get to level two after the first adventure, they get to level three after chapter two, they get to four after chapter three, and then they get to fifth level once they complete the adventure overall. If you don't like the idea of casting aid on the characters, another trick is to level them up to two right after they beat those first four goblins. So after, the, after they're attacked on the road, you immediately level them to two. They get second level hit points. They get second wind. They get other, other sort of, sort of uh, new abilities that can help them deal with the goblins in, in the Kragmaw hideout which can be pretty tough. The bugbear in particular can be a powerful, a powerful enemy if the characters are still first level. So I would suggest if you're running it, either find a way to drop aid on the characters so they have plus five, they have five extra hit points in order to deal with what's going on in, the, in Kragma Hideout, or level them up to two right afterwards. If you do level them up to two, a problem with that is then do you want to level them up to three after Goblin Arrows is done? Or do you hang on and keep them at two all the way through chapter one and two? That's an option as well. You just simply push back the next time they level and then they get right back on track. So that works really well. Either of those, either of those areas can work really well. 
One of the things that I really like about D&D in general, and I think it really helps in running chapter one of Lost Mine of Fandelver, in fact, many of the chapters in Lost Mine of Fandelver work with this, is that we don't have to assume how the characters are going to do something. Our role as a dungeon master is to put a situation in front of the players and let them navigate it how they will. So we don't have to think about, okay, scene one is going to be the ambush on the road. Scene two, they're going to deal with the guards at the front gate. Scene three, they're probably either going to deal with the wolves or they're going to go down. We don't have to worry about like what each scene is going to look like. Instead, there is a hideout. I'll pull up the map right now. So we have this nice hideout, right? And in this hideout, let's see, let's scroll over a little bit. Don't quite get it all in the full screen. There we go. So in area one and two are where we have uh, various goblins that are attacking. And we have, you know, there are the guards that are hanging out there. And in all of the other areas of this map, things are going on. Uh, uh, Clark, the boss, he's the bugbear boss of all these guys. He's doing things. The goblins are doing things. The wolves are doing things. So we, instead of thinking about how the characters are going to deal with this situation, we just think about what's going on with the situation itself. What is Clark up to at any given time? Uh, what are the wolves doing? Are the wolves out patrolling? Are the goblins out patrolling? Are the goblins sitting there and playing some stupid goblin game? It's it's up to us to decide what they're what they're doing, and we think of it that way, and we let the players decide how they're going to navigate the situation. So one thing that I've seen in the many times that I've run this adventure is how people react to the wolves in area three. So typically in area three, there's a a, a bunch of wolves, and some players grab their swords and bows and spells and they go in and they try to sneak up on the wolves and they kill them. But more than once I've seen players who try to use uh, uh, animal taming to try to, or, or uh, they, they, they do a uh, nature or animal handling check in order to try to tame the wolves. And in some case I've had, a, I've had a character who befriended one of the wolves and that wolf became a companion of theirs for the whole rest of the, not only this adventure, but the whole rest of the, that character's arc. So you, you never know how they're going to deal with it. And it's a lot of fun to see how they deal with it. Uh, one of the situations in here in Area 7 is that the, if the goblins figure out that they're being invaded, one of the things they can do is start knocking away the barrier that's holding back that big reservoir of water in Area 7, and it goes flooding down the river and sort of washes everybody away. Sometimes that happens and sometimes it doesn't. We don't really know. It's really dependent upon how the players are going to deal with the situation. And that's really where the fun comes in, right? The fun is we put the situation in there and we sort of watch what the players do, what decisions they make, and then see what the characters do and arbitrate how that works out. We don't have to force them down any path. If they manage to get a, you know, they manage to sneak up on Clark and trick him into coming into the river area and use the water to wash him away, that's awesome. They don't all have to sit there and fight. Not everything is this perfectly balanced balanced combat system. It's it's sometimes nice to just let the story flow and see how things work out. So that's that's a lot of fun. It really helps us to pay attention to the characters' backgrounds as well. If you're using the starter set characters, the 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 event the, the character sheets, the pre-generated character sheets that come in the starter set, they have built-in backgrounds that are tied to many of the NPCs and many of the situations throughout Lost Mine of Fandelver. They're really excellent sheets. Even if players are planning to build their own characters, you might remind them to take a look at those sheets and perhaps take those backgrounds and apply it to the character that they're building. It also tells you a lot about the story, and if you know what characters the players are going to be running, and you have read the background, you know how to tie those backgrounds into the story as you go. This is particularly important with the various connections to the NPCs that go on and to Fandelver itself. This, the connections to Sildar Hallwinter, who is here in this adventure, and Gundren Rockseeker, who appears in a later adventure, can be particularly important. Lost Minds of Fandelver is really one of my favorite adventures. It's just a good, straightforward, fun D&D adventure. And chapter one in particular captures everything that we like in sort of a classic D&D adventure. You're ambushed by goblins, you find some goblin caves, you navigate those caves, you learn about a boss, you rescue an NPC, you deal with all sorts of sneaky goblins, you have to figure out what you're going to do with some wolves. There's a lot of fun here. Even though it's a very straightforward, very basic D&D adventure, there's a lot of ways for players to have a lot of fun. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please take a look at Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master or the Lazy DM's Workbook and look for future videos where we'll be covering chapters 2, 3, and 4 of Lost Mine of Fandelver. Thank you very much.